In the modern marketing world, we think a lot about increasing engagement, but what's at the heart of everything we do? Well, it's this. Cold hard cash. In fact, for the last 3,000 years, this is what civilization has used to survive. Since almost 1,000 BC, people have come to places like this to transact. I've come here to the world's largest marine flea market to sum up the last 3,000 years of marketing and sales. For millennia, people came to places like this to browse and interact, to find what they needed or wanted, and transact. This is how a transaction works. You find something you like, you take out your cash, you give him the cash, he gives you the shoes, and we're done. That's a transaction. Thank you very much. Thank you. Have a good one. And for the last 3,000 years, that's exactly what we've done. We've transacted. Now imagine this flea market is the internet. We're bombarded with opportunities to transact. It's a cacophony of vendors screaming for our attention. They're in our Facebook feeds and in our Instagram stories. They're desperate to get our attention to click through or walk over and buy something. And what does the modern marketer do? Well, we move on immediately after the sale. We look for the next target. For those watching at home, um, these are sold for our website, chillingthemost.com. To be honest, not much has changed in the way we market and sell in the last 2,963 years. Modern marketing's transition from transactions to something new only started in 1981. May 1st, 1981 to be exact. But before we dive into what happened on that date, we should give credit where credit's due. In the late 1700s, American retailers attempted to woo customers back to their stores by handing out tokens to be redeemed at a later date. Pretty smart. They tried to move from single transactions to a repeat purchase. A hundred years later, retailers realized these coins were expensive to produce, so they introduced stamps. Catalog companies rewarded buyers with stamps that could be redeemed on their next purchase. But it would take another 100 years to get to May 1st, 1981. And that is when the marketing world changed forever. And it all started here on an airplane, where a young executive named Thomas Plaskett sat staring out the window, dreaming about a trip to Hawaii. Because everyone loves a trip to Hawaii. You see, in the early 1980s, the airlines were locked in a fare war. Flying had been commoditized after the airline industry's deregulation in 1978, and this massive fare battle was affecting profitability. Thomas had been trying to find a marketing solution to the price war for the last two years, but nothing seemed viable. The solution seemed simple. Find their most valuable customers and reward them for their commitment to the brand. But Thomas had no way to get in touch with their most loyal customers. Why? Because a brand new travel system called Sabre allowed travel agents to book flights for their customers without passing on the customer's contact information. So all Thomas had was a first and last name. Now Thomas had heard that Avis, working on a similar idea, had found a way to create a unique identifier for their customers. So Thomas tasked his team to do the exact same thing. As Thomas dreamed about the beaches of Maui, he reflected on the day he'd spent visiting travel managers in the Northeast. One of those managers proudly displayed a two-star Admirals Club plaque on his wall. Cost-cutting had led to disbanding the Admirals Club years ago, but it used to give members access to a luxury airport lounge and a little gold star for every 100,000 miles they flew. Suddenly, Thomas had an idea. What if we combine the idea of collecting stamps for our purchase from the 1960s with the pride of being in a club, like the Admirals Club? But to what end? Why become a member? What about collecting enough stamps to earn a free trip to Hawaii? Everyone wants a free trip to Hawaii, he thought. Over the next year, in complete secret, Thomas's team built the world's first modern loyalty program. Members were to earn miles for each trip to be redeemed against unused inventory for a free ticket anywhere the airline flew. Not just Hawaii. And on May 1st, 1981, Thomas debuted the American Airlines Advantage program to the world. 
and it was a hit. Within seven days, other airlines tried to catch up by announcing their loyalty programs, but none of them would be as successful or as revolutionary as the one Thomas and his team had devised. Over the next 37 years, everyone from hotels to grocery stores to gas stations followed American Airlines' model. The Advantage program became a billion dollar business, and it's still the world's largest loyalty program, boasting over 71 million members. But here's what's amazing about the model Thomas devised. Miles became a currency, just as valuable to its members as dollars. Sure, miles are miles, and points are points, and cash is cash, but the lines between loyalty rewards and currency are very, very blurry. And for the first time in a thousand years, customers began transacting with something other than cash. And this got me wondering. Why hasn't anyone rethought loyalty programs in the internet era? Sure, loyalty programs have evolved, but I wonder why there hasn't been a revolution in the loyalty business. The truth is, marketing conditions aren't all that different from 1981's airline business. The internet has commoditized almost any transaction, and information about your customers, prospects, and leads is undeniably a valuable asset. In fact, consumer information is so valuable today Maybe we should treat it like a currency. Here's the deal. Over the next few weeks, we'll be exploring how some brilliant businesses are building loyalty and transacting with information even before a customer purchases. But here's my challenge to you. Next time you find yourself on a plane staring out the window wishing you were in Hawaii, start daydreaming about a way you can win over your prospects even before they become customers. What's your Thomas Plaskett moment? Want to find out what Thomas Plaskett went on to do after he left American Airlines? Join my loyalty loop this week and you'll get an exclusive bonus clip all about Thomas's amazing career. I'll see you next week in my loyalty loop.